This video is brought to you by Rocket Money. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they are providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, today's video is a little bit less of the investigation stuff, though I am working on a couple more big projects in the background, and more has to do with opinionated analysis. For those interested, let's get started. Funny thing, this video is all about sponsorships in a way, and also happens to be sponsored by a company, but hopefully by the end I will showcase that not all sponsorships are the same, not all creators pursue them in a similar way, and some of those ways sponsors and creators are better or worse than others. Today's topic involves crypto, but for those less interested in crypto in particular, it primarily revolves around celebrities. Crypto is the most notable catalyst right now, but the actual topic is a much more established phenomenon where major companies pay money to influential people, be they celebrities, YouTubers, Twitch streamers, or athletes, in return for promotion, aka sponsorships. The FTC, contrary to what many creators seem to be aware of, has fairly well-defined guidelines for how YouTubers, and all other forms of internet influencers for that matter, are required to disclose sponsorships. And I will, of course, link all these resources down below, but the gist of it is that anytime you get paid by a company to promote something, you must disclose that relationship fully. Free products? Say it. Got paid? Say it. Officially paid on a consistent basis to never say bad things at all, only good things? Gotta openly acknowledge that. And theoretically, this allows for an audience to clearly identify and evaluate the content they see, with full understanding that it's usually just regurgitated talking points that are completely divorced from the creator's actual opinions, knowledge, or attention. Basically, it's all about the money, 9 out of 10 times. However, that's not the only way to endorse a product, and the trick is in the details. Today's video is going to use an example of the absolute worst way that you can run a YouTube channel and accept sponsors. Inversely, though far from perfect, this video should also demonstrate how I myself pursue sponsorships, which is wildly different than our example for today, and ultimately my hope is that this will be valuable to viewers of YouTube as they try and discern what is and is not a negligent or harmful promotional advertisement. Alright, before going further, it's time for today's video sponsor, Rocket Money. I'm going to level with everyone watching this right now. From here on out, there's going to be a few changes to how I run ads, and I'd like to make it very clear at the onset, Rocket Money has been supportive of these decisions in a way that is very much appreciated. From this point forward, instead of adhering to marketing briefs and advertising talking points, I will only focus on legitimate reasons why I myself actively use Rocket Money, or any other sponsor for that matter, and find it to be a valuable service or product. It's my genuine hope that this level of sincerity will be rewarded by both you, the audience, and reputable brands in the future, despite short-term uncertainty, which so far has proven to be the case. I use Rocket Money for one specific reason, budgeting. It can do a fair bit more than just budgeting, by the way, like monitor credit score, bill negotiation, and canceling unwanted subscriptions, but I find it to be the most successful app I have yet used for showing me all of my spending habits right in one place, and spurring the realization, not a pleasant one sometimes, that I can be a heck of a lot more responsible with how I spend money. Rocket Money helps me cancel a few unwanted streaming services. I think it was actually four that were running me quite a monthly bill that needed to be gotten rid of. It helped me realize just how expensive it is to buy things at the convenience store five minutes away compared to the actual supermarket that's just a little bit further, even though everything seems to be overly expensive these days. But the bottom line is, I use the service myself, I think it is genuinely valuable, and for those reasons, I'm happy to accept them as a sponsor. Rocket Money was formerly known as Truebill. It currently has over 3.4 million individual members, and if you go to rocketmoney.com UEG or click the link down below in the description, you can get started for free. Premium subscriptions come with more features, obviously, and to reiterate one final time, this will be the new format going forward for ad reads. Rocket Money has supported me in this, and their service has likewise supported me in the ever-continuous struggle of modern financial planning. So thank you, and make sure to use the link down below if you have any interest at all in their platform. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring the channel. So what are we working with? What's the example? This right here. This is a lawsuit filed on behalf of one Edwin Garrison, which names 10 separate defendants, which includes nine individuals and one creative agency. Among those individuals, we can see Ben Armstrong, also known as BitBoy Crypto. For today, BitBoy Crypto is our golden standard of precisely how not to operate an online business as he rampages across social media, making threats, whipping his audience into a frenzy, and flogging himself through the public square trying to get distance from what seems to be, at least in my opinion, an avalanche of shit cascading down on top of him like the side of Mount St. Helens in 1980. Suffice it to say, it's good material for a video. Now, I've already done a video about BitBoy Crypto once before. It's a lot of context, some accusations and promotions from over a year ago, and a few other items of interest, but the root of the issue is this. BitBoy, according to community analysis and specific info digging by the likes of Zach XBT and MoneyTor on Twitter, has promoted what seems to be dozens of crypto projects that turned out to be full-scale rug-pull scams. 
Here are some examples, sourced and cited from a thread by Money's War. Vox Finance, down 99%. There's more to that one, but I'm not currently able to do a multi-hour version of this video, so we'll leave it at that. It's down 99% since promotion. Eureka, down more than 99%. Smart Key, down 97%. Mimir, down even more than 99%. Ecomi, Ecomi, whatever that is, where BitBoy specifically said, the potential of this project is off the charts, now down massively. Curate, 99% down, where BitBoy said at the time, quote, it is now trading at an incredible discount of around $3. What is it now? Four pennies. The list goes on. Crowny down 96% in just one month post-promo by BitBoy. Cirrus, down 93%. ZDEX, pumped and dumped because massive YouTubers promoting micro and nano cap scam coins has only one outcome. Want more? Okay. According to analysis done by Zach XBT, BitBoy promoted and has now deleted the videos for MYX, DISTX, Zao Finance, which pulled an exit scam in 2020 about a week after he promoted it, I believe, and doesn't even exist anymore, Ethi, another deleted video after it collapsed, Locke, this one speaks for itself and was part of a video where he said, top five picks that will, definitively, 100x your portfolio, then deleted it when the project fell apart. CPH, deleted now. PAMP, he had a Freudian slip here in that one and called it PUMP a couple of times. Now deleted. And more. The list continues on and on. See the pattern? Make a claim, say something will 100x in your investment portfolio, then promote it. The project turns out to be a massive scam. Delete the video, rinse, repeat. Not a good pattern. But why does it matter? It's just a crypto bro doing crypto bro things, after all. Why do I care? Why does anyone care? Answer, because hopefully he doesn't get away with it. The world of crypto is in flux right now. The CFTC, as I write this script, actually, is basically trying to kill Binance, the largest crypto exchange outright. The SEC just won a case against Library, is also simultaneously suing Ripple, XRP. Crypto institutions are collapsing left and right, wiping out billions of dollars, and the contagion just continues unabated. And crypto influencers are scrambling to cover their asses. That is a colossal shift, and the regulatory hammer is about to come down hard. Where does it land? Simple. It lands wherever it needs to so that most people fall in line. And that usually means a flurry of high-profile but easy targets, or at least a couple of them, so that the government can get some wins, send a message, and do the absolute minimum badly, like always. Basically, they just have to do something. It just doesn't necessarily have to be the right thing, or the smart thing, or even the most efficient thing. It's the government. What do we expect? Still, sending a message can sometimes be scary if you are the person most likely to get squeezed in order to send that message. And maybe that's not BitBoy Crypto this time. Maybe I'm way off base, but let's really take a look at the situation. This right here is the lawsuit, alleging that BitBoy Crypto and a group of other influencers should be liable for their promotion of the FTX native token, FTT. In simple words, without rehashing the exorbitant amount of content it would take to give everyone a like top to bottom rundown of the FTX situation, even though it's been all over the news for a very long time now, FTX created a native token and used it to facilitate an Enron level fraud scheme, basically, which has now blown up in their face. But far from being finished, the United States government has now turned its attention to crypto almost fully, seeking to either cut the industry down to size or kill it outright. Maybe this is because they want to release a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. There's a lot of theories, a lot of different things. I have videos on that as well, but that's the gist of it. As it all unfolds, a class action lawsuit is filed, a couple of them actually, which target the celebrities and YouTubers who promoted the FTT token, claiming that they should be held liable for damage and losses. And one of the parties named, of course, as we read earlier, is BitBoy, Ben Armstrong. This is the really funny part. What would everyone do if they had promoted, let's say, dozens of now obvious scams, rug pulls, and fake projects to their audience, and their audience verifiably lost money on all of those investments? What would you do? Let's put it that way. Would you A, keep quiet and hope the case falls apart since you did seem to disclose mostly that you were paid? B, get defensive and puff your chest out, ready to take a stand, since you have confidence that you didn't do anything technically wrong, perhaps, or because you are afraid that you did and you just want to try and fight back and seem tough. Or C, harass and threaten the opposition's legal team openly, fixate on a specific line about how you never talked to anyone at FTX, and make the entire thing a hundred times worse. Obviously, BitBoy has gone for answer number three, because that's the fun one. Let's establish something right here, right now. According to BitBoy himself, quote, 
I personally rigorously vet all paid promotions and deny 99%, allowing just 1%. I also do vetting for projects for other influencers in TV broadcasting, end quote. And that's great to hear. But just keep in mind that within about, let's say, five minutes of research, you will find dozens of projects that zeroed out or openly scammed the investors, promoted by BitBoy, many of them deleted in shame soon after he takes the videos down, including this little gem right here. Number one, FTT. Number two, 4chain, okay? Now, FTT. Why? I've said before, this is going to be one of the number one coins we were going to accumulate in the bear market. But got some inside info. Got some inside info that this thing is about to explode in the next few weeks. I'm sorry. What? Insider info on a coming pump. A pump of FTT. Let me get that straight. Insider info on upcoming undisclosed price movement of the native token on FTX. Sure, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Definitely should have bragged about that. Keep in mind, as BitBoy now faces a lawsuit over the collapse of FTX and his role in promotion of it, allegedly, he is claiming to online media outlets that he has never spoken with anyone at FTX or operated as a marketing agent acting on their behalf not once. Hmm. Food for thought, how exactly does he have insider info on FTT about future price movements if he never spoke to anyone associated? We have to think here, BitBoy claims to deny 99% of the sponsors who approach him. He claims to vet everything rigorously, personally, and also claims to have insider info, yet practically all of the picks he has ever made either zeroed out as a result of fraud, collapsed completely, or massively, massively declined, well and truly beyond what many of the more stable coins have done, right? He took a bunch of projects, he picked all the losers, so it's, it's one of two things. Either he is probably gonna get in trouble over this or he's the crypto influencer with the worst track record of all time and how in the world does anyone listen to this guy? We have to think here, BitBoy claims to deny 99% of all the sponsors who approach him. He claims to vet everything rigorously and personally and also claims to have insider info. Yet practically all of the picks he has ever publicly made of the ones he didn't delete in shame after they fell apart, all of the picks he's publicly made most of them, either zeroed out as a result of fraud or collapsed completely. Meanwhile, have a look at this right here. If you want to use Celsius, you can check out bitboycrypto.com slash deals. Got a great deal on Celsius for you. But it's a great way to put your money to work, earn passive income, and it's an especially attractive feature for traders who plan on hodling 9,943 of a token we love for this year, FTT. And right now, that is worth $437,000. Secret token, FTT. That is the token of FTX. Sam Bankman fried everything this man touches turns to gold. I don't know. Moon. I, mean, I think 40 to 5 to $50 is definitely reasonable for Costa. For all, Terra is crushing right it right now. now. Terra sure. ecosystem is definitely bullish. From this point forward, on this channel, on BitBoy Crypto channel, on the BitBoy Crypto, all of our socials, we are, we are never doing sponsored content again. It's hard to explain just how perfectly BitBoy is showcasing the worst possible response. And believe me, if anyone understands the impulse to square up and start pushing back, it's me. I've actually done it successfully in a similar fashion. I just did it the right way, just not that long ago, with Mario Nafal and his stupid legal team. Here's a snapshot of the kind of things he has started to do and say. Not just your standard posturing, mind you, which is totally understandable. This is on a whole new level. Allegedly, there were as many as 21 calls in a 45-minute period, harassing the opposition's legal firm. Whether it be BitBoy or someone else, one of his supporters, an unconnected party, not sure. Again, this is part of the counterfiling where they say that he's harassing them. BitBoy rallied his own supporters, though, we do know this, by publicly fixating on juvenile insults about the opposing counsel like height or penis size. He called them cancer, threatened to get their licenses revoked, and honestly, have at it, man. I'll be the first one to tell you that standing up to lawyers and having them fall apart like wet toilet paper is actually one of the most satisfying things you can even do here on YouTube. But damn, in order to do that, you have to actually be smart. I won't harp on it too much, but by publicly tweeting to his one million followers that he has done his part with a one-star hateful review on the legal practice Google page, the obvious underlying message in context is 
hey guys, you should go do this too. It's a review bomb, which builds a pretty solid case in combination with the threats, spammed emails full of profanity, which he himself started tweeting out proudly, and repeated phone calls, that BitBoy is deliberately threatening the opposition, and there's no version of this where that helps him. Maybe it doesn't get him into trouble, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, I don't look into this kind of stuff as deep as it could be, but man, come on, can somebody tell me in the comment section if that can possibly help him? How in the world does doing all of this aid his case? Sponsorship is a tricky topic these days. For example, did everyone who promoted established titles do some sort of irreparable damage to their audience because the company had a marketing pitch that was crappy and borderline deceptive? No, of course not. Some creators never said a single thing about legally changing your name. They just didn't put that in the ad, and anyone who watched it didn't have that expectation. Or actually legally being a lord, they didn't say that either, and focused on the more honest components of having a novelty gift that serves as a wall decoration or a talking piece with a charity component where they plant trees. Which was real, by the way, I checked, contrary to what the angry mob was led to believe initially. Is someone who promoted one or two crypto projects that got, let's say, slammed by regulatory actions and crushed as a result deceptive? Are they deceptive? Or did they just get unlucky, especially if there's 10 others that are legitimate? If someone really does try while getting sponsorships as a necessary part of their income to make it so that they can keep doing YouTube, does that make them terrible or a bad person? Of course not. But BitBoy isn't that. BitBoy operated a crypto-related channel accepting enormous amounts of money to consistently promote projects that have now gone to zero, declared bankruptcy, absconded with all the cash, or any number of additional failure options because there wasn't a single shred of due diligence. People can disagree with me over Masterworks, for example, saying that it's not as good as the marketing makes it seem, or claiming that the risk is higher than some creators led their audience to believe, and they're welcome to do it. Have at it. Criticize me all you want. But how you advertise a product matters, and no one can claim that I haven't done due diligence on Masterworks. Today, I showcase an example of my sponsorship methodology in real time, which I myself can even do better on, of course. But the important point is this. Crypto is like the one ring under Sauron's lidless, flame-wreathed eye. Regulatory bodies are sending a message. They're trying to do that. And one of those messages is that unregistered financial advice, promotion of unregistered securities, and undisclosed promotions can't be tolerated. Undisclosed promos. Hmm. I guess we don't really have an example. Oh, yes, we do. Because in late 2022, while replying to a critic going by the name Grinding Poet on Twitter, BitBoy said the following, quote, it's been an hour, lol. I'll give you $10,000 if you can find and prove an undisclosed promo. They don't exist, end quote. Gotta love that confidence. Ugh, not so much. Not long after, Zach XBT posts definitive proof that BitBoy Crypto did in fact run an undisclosed promotion, and after initially refusing to pay up, because why wouldn't he, BitBoy finally did. From they don't exist to, okay, here's your money, they do exist, I must have forgotten to delete that one oopsie in what is possibly one of the most hilarious backpedals of all time. The SEC and the CFTC are currently priming the hammer. They're looking for nails that stick out of the board intending to hammer them with the hammer, and the crypto influencers who promoted dozens of scam tokens, rug pulls, and fraud schemes, self-acknowledging that they did undisclosed promos publicly, claiming to have insider info on FTT, while simultaneously proclaiming that they never spoke with anyone about FTT ever, is a nail sticking out pretty goddamn far if you ask me. Regulatory bodies don't care if it happened a year or two ago. Uh, that's what the crypto bros say. They're like, well, it happened a year ago that he scammed everybody. He's reformed now. Are, are, are you sure? Okay, let's see. But regulatory bodies don't care about that as long as it's within the statute of limitations and provable. BitBoy probably has a bit of a case on the merits by offloading the responsibility to his audience and saying, it's not my fault the idiots listen to my deceptive and horrible financial advice that's not financial advice. It's their fault that they listen to the deceptive and horrible financial advice that's not financial advice. But how well is that going to fly if he's locking himself into self-professed contradictions where he either had inside info, according to him, and obviously committed a crime of some sort, I would expect, where he didn't have insider info contrary to what he claimed to his audience, and obviously lied to everyone about an investment vehicle. How do you square that? The ballad of BitBoy is truly fascinating. In his head over heels scramble for social media clout, one of his angles was going after and trashing Shark Tank mogul Kevin O'Leary. Now, I have no opinion on Kevin myself or the situation in his past, but BitBoy went on a really long tirade across social media about Kevin O'Leary being a murderer, explicitly a murderer. 
someone who bribes plaintiffs in criminal cases. I mean, these are definitive statements, not allegedly. Not He does try and be careful and say, like, well, according to rumor, but then he'll come out with, like, a definitive five seconds later and say, like, he is a murderer. It's like, oh, okay, man. <laughs> You're getting way too big for your britches there, dude. He's just, he's spewing all sorts of rumors that bear no current evidence whatsoever. And trust me, I devoted a significant amount of time to looking for this. So anybody who's talking to BitBoy Crypto about how Kevin O'Leary is supposedly, allegedly a murderer with all this insider info, dude, come to me, come to me and get a real video made. Go to any other reputable YouTuber. Like what, what is this? Why, why are we fueling this kind of insanity right now? I'm just baffled. Let me ask all of you watching this one question. When the government looks to send a message, who do they pick? Do they pick a difficult case against a mostly reputable, but maybe slightly off base creator who does at least a modicum of due diligence and tries? Or do they pick the loudest, angriest, dumbest, most frequently wrong, not financial advice crypto YouTuber with a huge audience who runs his mouth on investment vehicles that will make his audience 100 times their money back with diametrically opposed and contradictory claims in his social media history and a worse track record than practically anyone you could ever think of in crypto behind figures like maybe Mashinsky, Bankman Fried, or Do Kwan, like the real heavy hitters. Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one, and for now, a case brought against BitBoy looks pretty damn simple from my perspective. Regardless, I wanted to take this opportunity to explore the evolving world of sponsorships on YouTube because not all creators promote things the same way. It's not black and white. Sometimes it is gray. And as I make adjustments to my own sponsor methodology these coming weeks, I want to discuss what I believe will eventually become a landmark case in the world of YouTube. Also, yeah, BitBoy did try to threaten and sue another YouTuber before that blew up in his face, um, I have no idea what he's going to do in response to this, but I'm no stranger to lawsuit threats. And I, I, basically, I've already done multiple times what he's currently trying to do, but actually only making worse, right? So he's trying to puff up his chest, posture, and then put on a really good defense, right? Like, that's the goal. That's the dream. I've already done that multiple times in my past. Everybody's welcome to go back in my video archive and look. He's trying to do that, and it's catastrophically failing. So at least I get an entertaining video out of all this. It's not there yet, it's not currently a landmark case or anything like that, and maybe he even gets his name disassociated with FTX on this particular count, but my honest, opinionated prediction is that BitBoy ends up as one of the sacrificial lambs, if you will, reputationally drawn and quartered by some kind of opposing legal force, such as the FTC or the SEC, or anyone else for that matter, as a way to send the wider influencer ecosystem a message. They don't do it often, but they'll do it when they have to, and my guess is that they're starting to feel like they probably have to. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, or in this case, maybe it gets jail time. We'll see. That's it. If you want to support, please check out the links down below. Locals and Patreon, obviously. Merchandise, social media, or the video sponsor, who I was paid by. I got paid to promote a product. It's totally fine to do. You just have to be honest about why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and what the product is. I'll happily accept money from them again in the future in order to pursue larger projects because that's the funding mechanism for all my different you know, videos and investigations. But yeah, there's a couple other YouTubers as well linked down in the description, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.